Hey, welcome to this episode of Bird's Garage. Today we have a 2011 F-150 in the shop. We've got some braking issues. We've got a little bit of pulsation in the pedal. So after the intro, I'm going to tell you everything that's going on because I already have a good idea of what we're going to do and how we're going to get this vehicle back on the road. inspection in this vehicle a couple weeks ago we noticed the rear brake pads were really thin we also noticed the surface of the rotor where the pads contact was really really poor and, and once I show that to you when I get them off you'll definitely get to know what I'm talking about also since this vehicle is seven years old we want to go ahead and proactively change the brake fluid it's never been done so the front brakes have been done very recently with this vehicle and the rears have never been done another reason to change it finally what I talked about was a little bit of brake pulsation well when you put your foot on the brake, if you feel it moving up and down, that's what they call pulsation. That usually means that the rotor, some rotor is warped. It could be as, as severe as maybe a hub or something else is warped in the, the braking system or drive line. But with this particular vehicle, I'm highly confident that it is in the rear brakes. And again, once I show you the rear brakes, when I take them off the pads and the rotors, you'll know what I'm talking about and, and you'll feel the same confidence that I do. So, uh, let me uh, get out some tools, get out the jack and some other things. I'm going to put this thing up in the air and get the tires off and we'll start disassembling our rear brakes. So I'm going to start taking off the caliper real easy. just has two bolts and probably have to compress the piston and then the caliper will just slide off. This is a little vibration isolator that Ford uses on these F-150s. I've uh, taken a wrench and just run this hex and not taken this apart and been successful at getting this out. This will slide out enough just so you can take the caliper off and then take the bolt out. So uh, let's see how it goes. Hopefully nothing is too tight. You start with the bottom one. Just simple 10 mil. And that one's really that one's really easy. And then I should be able to get this one out. To work it a little bit and try to get it on that hex. Like that. Yep, this one's coming too. Yeah, easy enough. Now let's see if I can get the caliper off. Probably won't come off. Oh, it's coming off without compressing the piston. That's what you not want to do. So you never want to hang, let this caliper just hang like this. You just put stress on the hose and you can damage the hose and then the brake fluid starts leaking, you lose brake pressure, all different kinds of problems you could imagine by losing your brake fluid and having a, a leak in the system. So real nice in here, we can just put it right on our spring like this and we can just let it rest on top. If we didn't have a nice rest, then we want to get like some coat hanger wire, MIG welding wire, something and just hang it up out of the way. So with that then, I'm going to now go and attempt to get this, get this rotor off. Now the, the kit we have has new, these little these little uh, retainers that, not really a retainer, these are just, uh, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but the pad just rests on top of there. They're, I think they're made out of stainless steel. And these can wear out over time. And we have new ones in the kit that we bought. So we just want to get this off. Just take them off while we're doing this. And I'll have to fool around with this one a little bit. So now I can go over to take the rotor off and the rotor's being a little stubborn and that's because from being on it for such a long period of time you get corrosion that builds up behind the hub flange and the, the uh, rotor flange there on the opposite side and they start to get rust in there and they'll actually seize themselves together. If it was aluminum I actually had a little bit of difficulty getting the wheels off. The wheels are aluminum and those where they ride here 
on the rotor, those can those are even worse because you have two dissimilar metals and they and they corrode it. When they corrode differently like that, they, they actually seize themselves together. So what I did previously when I first took this wheel off is I sprayed a little WD-40 in these two holes, which are actually holes to get this help to get this rotor broken away from the from the axle flange there. And then I sprayed all around in this area to get the WD-40 to penetrate a little bit. I actually probably could have put WD-40 in a little bit here where there is room for the studs to come out. But I'm going to use these, instead of beating it with a hammer, I would prefer to try to use these threaded holes, which is to my advantage. And I found a couple of bolts that fit these threads. And once you apply some pressure onto here by tightening them down, this should break away from the axle hub there. So I got those in place and now I'm going to go ahead and get my impact and put a little force on them and see if I can get this broken off. You can see it's, yeah, see it's moving now. And it's definitely broken away. And you have a little brake shoes behind here for the emergency brake. They expand outward, and then when you press an emergency brake, when you when you press an emergency brake, expands outward, and that's right in this and right inside of this surface, and that holds the tension on to keep your uh, your car not moving from the brake being on. So let me see if I can walk this rotor off. And it looks like I'm going to have to go in and expand, or I'm sorry, collapse. The shoes down there's a little self adjuster down here in order to be able to pull this rotor off so I'm gonna look at the tools I need to do that I'm gonna go ahead and then do that and get the rotor off okay scratch what I just said the shoes are here and here there's room at the top and the bottom where there's where there's no shoes so I ended up instead of pulling with on the sh where the shoes are I ended up pulling where the shoe is not and this time I was able to walk it and get it off And then you can see our shoes here that I was talking about. If you had brake drums, it's the same thing. So you actually have a brake, you have a brake drum rotor combo in this in this type of design. So let me get a better camera angle, and I will then show you the rotor problem and then the pad problem that we had. So you see, this is a rotor I just took off. This is the worst side. You see how really really bad it was wearing and this is really rough and there's a step up so like the pad wasn't even wearing right there and this just started rusting really bad and then you see the pad here it's hardly any material left and it's it's really thin I'm surprised I wasn't getting any noise out of this it wasn't at the at the wear indicator yet and I'm surprised I wasn't getting noise against here but we really didn't hear anything when we test drove it so we are going to go ahead then, of course, replace this pad and rotor, and uh, I, I probably could possibly turn it, but I just they're, they're, we got a kit that uh, is much better than than the factory rotor anyway. So I'm we're that's what we're going to go ahead with this project and put that kit on, and I'm pretty confident, and you'll see, you know, as I said, you'll see here is this is where our pulsation was coming in our brake pedal, and I'm highly confident that replacing these two items in the brake job will fix it. So for this brake job we're going to go with the Power Stop Z36 Extreme Off-Road Kit. We put this kit on this vehicle uh, a while back now and we were really impressed by the braking capabilities and stopping power that this kit provided. So we're going to go ahead and match that and put it into the back of the vehicle. With this kit you get all the hardware loop that you need, boots for the calipers, you get a nice set of carbon fiber ceramic pads and you get two new rotors that are cross drilled slotted and they're zinc coated so they'll last a long time so we're going to go ahead then and i said we're going to do some cleanup and we're going to put this kit in and hopefully with uh fingers crossed and we're gonna, not going to have any issues we haven't had any issues so far and you just never know but so far so good So I want to do a cleanup here before I put the caliper back on and I put the rotor on. I first want to clean up where these steel pads are like a bushing where the pad rides on. 
they have some rust on them. I want to clean them up and, and make sure that they're flat. If they're not flat, the, this could sit a little off and might, the caliper might hold up trying to move back and forth. Secondly, I want to, I like to clean this area up and make sure it's all rust free because if you had heavy rust on one side or a little bit of debris or something, the rotor could not sit true to this hub and it actually, it actually could cause some brake pulsation as well. So I'm just going to take, you can use like a scotch brite or I'm going to take just a light uh, sanding disc with my uh, quarter angle grinder here and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to clean this up and, and this up. I want to get a little sandpaper and I'm going to clean these up just to be sure that everything matches and I'm going to go get a file and clean these up a little bit better and make sure they're they're nice and flat. So I got all those two items cleaned up. Next thing I want to do then is take apart this slider pin off the caliper and I want to uh, rebuild called rebuilding the sliders. We have new boots in the kit. We've got new ceramic lube. So what all we got to do is take this out of the caliper and then clean everything up, put the new lube in, put the new boots in. Now you would never want to just slap pads on a job like this and call it a day. And I have seen many people do that, but it's not the right thing to do. As an example, if you were to put pads on that really horrible rotor that we have, they certainly wouldn't last very long. And frankly, it's, you know, quite frankly, it's not very safe. So Besides in rebuilding these, you always want to do that A, B, you always want to true the rotor up. Either have it turned, take it to a machine shop, or then just replace it in our case. Sometimes they're going to be too thin and you're going to have to replace it anyways. This particular kit, we have to replace the rotor. Sometimes you get a patent rotor kit, it's actually a better deal and it's a safer way to go just to have a new rotor. So to do this then, to rebuild this, I'm going to just take the boot it's got a little step here where it sits and makes a nice seal and then I'm just gonna do that I gotta do it on the other side and I'm just gonna go ahead and then I'm gonna pull it out and these will seize up and it's not the it's not really the issue we're having and that's another reason you want to lubricate them and, and rebuild them if you don't do that they can seize up over time and then you you're, you're asking for brake failure so then with that then we're gonna get this this new this old boot out and we can put the the new boot in. So I think I'm gonna also run a little sandpaper in this hole, make sure there's no debris in it. And then I'll put I'll get the new boot. I will put lube then all in here and put the pin back in and then put it into, into the caliper and that'll be good to go for that one. So I got everything ready and cleaned up, rebuilt, to put back together. I got my caliper rebuilt, I rebuilt the sliders here. I think I said in the last shot that I was going to rebuild it and then put it in the caliper. Well you actually can't do that. You have to put this boot in the caliper first and then lube it in the inside and put the pin in. And before I did that, I, I cleaned out these holes with some 80 grit sandpaper to make sure they were true and round. I put the new pads on the caliper. Now this particular one goes against the piston, it doesn't matter what side you have it on. This particular one, you have to make sure the clip is down and you can actually put them backwards. Kit doesn't tell you that, so make sure you match it up. Then with the old pads that you took off, 
what I like to do is just take off part, part one side at a time and leave those parts on that side and you know it, then it's uh, not that hard to uh, mix things up. So then I ended up putting a little bit of that lube. I like to put a little bit of that caliper pin lube just slightly, just very, very light on here so the pads have a little bit of uh, a little bit of grease to move back and forth. Uh, the rule of thumb with this kind of stuff is you can see it, it's too much. So you just want to put a very, very light coat on both sides. And then another thing I like to do is this is uh, anti-season. I like to put this on the hub so when I put the rotor on and it's on for a long period of time any kind of moisture it's going to get in there remember we had a little bit of trouble trying to break it off when we first started working on this project so that anti-seize will help so you don't get build up any corrosion in there you'll be able to take this off uh, right away the second time or, or the next time you're going to take it apart now if you had a, a rotor you're putting back on you'd also want to clean up that mating surface as well like I did with this one uh, because it, you know, not only the one side, the other side can have rust and whatever else on it too that could cause the rotor not to sit 100% true flush with this uh, axle shaft hub right here. So I'm then going to go ahead and then get the rotor here and they are directional. This one says uh, rear passenger side and I'm going to brake clean the surface here before then I put the pads on. Uh, this. A lot of times you buy rotors new and they have some sort of anti-rust oil or something so they don't get uh, any kind of rust in shipping. They have some sort of anti-rust coating on them and you have to clean that off. But I might have got fingerprints. My hands are pretty dirty anyways. I want to clean make sure any grease is off there before I go ahead and uh, put the pads back on. One other thing I wanted to touch on real quick is this piston will be out because the pad is war and you will have to compress that in order to be able to get these new new pads on this rotor. So what I did is I just took a, a C-clamp a and I took an old, I left the old, I put the old pad back in and I just put some force on it and it just compressed really nicely and that also tells me too that this, there's nothing wrong with this piston, it's not frozen or anything, it moves really easy. So I'm going to get the brake cleaner out and I'm going to clean up this rotor here and put this back together. I'm going to do this reverse orient or the reverse that I did when I put the took the caliper off. I'm going to put it on, put the two bolts in, and the only other last thing then is I like to put a little blue anti locker on the uh, on the ends of the threads just to ensure that they're not going to come loose. And of course, I'm going to torque them down to whatever torque value it is. It's probably only like 11 newton meter, but I will look that up and and see what it is. And once we get this done, then We'll go to the other side and then we can start bleeding the brakes. Remember how I said earlier everything was going too easy? Well, it was and I shouldn't have said anything because I got over to this side. I got this side finished, but I was loosening up the brake bleeder on the old caliper here and it ended up snapping off. So it's not going to do us any good. I'm not going to be able to change the brake fluid. So I went ahead and I got a new caliper here from actually this power stop makes this too. I guess they just started getting into the caliper world. I didn't know they, they actually made them. So I got this everything together on this side. I got the new caliper on. If you're going to put the caliper on, make sure that you change the copper washers that come with the new caliper. It's very important when you put them on the hose. I got everything all buttoned up. I got the hose torqued, the, uh, the bolts torqued for the caliper again. So I am going to blow off the front tires and I'm going to prep to start bleeding uh, the brakes all the way around. So uh, as long as we don't have any other types of issues, hopefully the bleeders are okay in the front. I already sent the other one on the other side in the back and that one's fine. Uh, I don't think, you never know, I shouldn't say anything again, but hopefully the bleeders will open up in the front and we can go ahead and we can hook up our, for this project we're gonna use the, the uh, motive power bleeder that I have and we're gonna go ahead and bleed the brakes and then we should be good to go. So I got my power bleeder hooked up. It's holding pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and start bleeding the brakes. Remember, this pushes the brake fluid and the air out of the bleeders. So I'm gonna start right rear, left rear, then go uh, right front, left front. Start furthest to the master cylinder to the closest to the master cylinder last. And I'm gonna run it till I see no more air coming out of the bleeders and then shut them off after I 
follow each sequence. So wish me luck, hopefully it'll go okay. Well, I must say these rotors are pretty good through these wheels, but looks was not the point of putting them on. The point was to have a more durable pad rotor combination that we wouldn't be afraid to get really hot if we want to do some extreme towing. Maybe take do a little off road, but they're going to be really great on the street. Just like when we put those power stops on the front, we noticed a big brake improvement in this vehicle. So I got everything bled. I put the wheels on. I put the lug nuts on. I torqued them to spec. And then when I got in the car, I made sure I pumped the brake pedal. Now that's very important to do because after you push those pistons in, you're going to have a, a, a basically a gap to where the caliper is and where the pad is where, versus where the rotor is. So you may pump it once and it might go right to the floor. And if you do that without uh, pumping it up uh, completely first a, a bunch of different times, you might not have any stopping power. So you're going to jump in and try to put it in gear. You might hit somebody, you might hit another car. It's a really, really a, a good you know, safety issue of not doing that. So always make sure when you, anytime you do anything like this, you pump up the brake pedal. And you want to test the brakes as well before you go ahead and hop in and, and go uh, uh, test them out. Now there is a break-in procedure with these pads. I'm not going to go into it. If you do put these on, they've got great instructions or you can pull them off their website and you can see what the break-in procedure is. It's really important. Uh, I think some of the things they tell you is the, pad, the rotor could develop hot spots and some other issues you could have and you could definitely uh, premature the, the life of the rotor and the pads not doing that. So uh, that's all the time we got for today. Everything worked out really good besides that caliper that had the broken bleeder, but we got that all taken care of. I'm going to go out now and test the truck and see how it does. Well, that wraps up another fantastic show. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your projects. And remember, it's not a rewarding day unless you get dirty.